Have you guys ever spun a bloodline of Shinder Life and wondered what the strengths and weaknesses of the bloodline were? Well, that's what this video is about. So if you guys enjoyed this video, remember to like, but subscribe, let's right to the video guide. All right, so we started off with the original Akuma. Now, the original Akuma, I do actually feel like the original, it's just like um the strengths of the original Akuma are going to be that it's just overall a pretty good bloodline. Like it has everything you would actually need from the from the bloodline itself, but it doesn't really do anything special. All of the abilities, you know, they could be easy to replace with other abilities and stuff like that. So I do feel like the Akuma's strengths rely on the fact that it over, it's just overall an okay bloodline it's just an average bloodline now the weaknesses are as i previously stated the it can all of the moves can actually be replaced with something better akuma doesn't specialize at every anything the only thing it really specializes at is being you know okay overall so for bankai kuma a bankai kuma overall just it has a really good stun so the strength is actually going to rely in the fact that it has one of the best if not the single best stun in the entirety of shindo life now the weaknesses of bankai that the other abilities besides the second ability which is the stun they're really not that great overall they are usable it has an okay artage an okay damage ability but generally bankai the only ability worth using is actually going to be the stun now for shiver kuma the strengths are going to rely in the fact that shiver kuma overall is a really good stalling bloodline that is kind of what shiver kuma does best in my opinion it is a really good bloodline for stalling out team fights stalling out fights in general being able to get your cooldowns back because the ability is stunned for such a long period of time it it's just overall a pretty good bloodline for just stalling out fights. I would also like to mention that it does have quite a lot of stuns, which could also be considered a strength. Now, the weakness is that is going to be that Shiver Kuma really isn't that great compared to some of the other bloodlines of the game for PvP and PvE content. So I do feel like the weak the weakness of it is kind of the similar it's it's the exact same as the strength. The weakness is going to be the fact that it is meant for stalling out fights. So it's a strength and a weak. Now for Riot Akuma, the strengths of Riot Akuma are gonna rely on the fact that it has an absurd amount of iframes. The C spec the weapon spec pretty much all of uh, all of the abilities besides the second one is a form of iframe third one is a you know iframe block breaker the first ability is an iframe counter that teleports to them the actual c spec is an iframe mode drain ability and then the weapon spec is a lot like the third ability it's just like an iframe damage ability so the the strengths of riot cooper could be the fact that it has a ton of iframes if you know how to time the abilities correctly it can actually be a very powerful bloodline now the weakness is that it doesn't really specialize at anything besides just having a lot of iframes so people generally only pick and choose what ability from this bloodline now for, for satori akuma the strength is going to be honestly in the fact that it has a really 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 good mode the mode is going to be the strength of satori it's a pretty mode carried bloodline in my opinion just because people generally view satori as being that bloodline with an 80k damage block breaking ability that is generally why people use you know satori in a lot of different scenarios i would also like to add that satori you know satori the stun is pretty good the first ability is a true combo center so you can't do m1 in the first ability you just have to be a little wary of the first one because the range is very 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 tiny so with satori i do think the strength does rely on the fact that it has an insanely good mode but the weaknesses of satori are going to be that it really really the only thing you're going to be using from it is going to be the mode and the abilities aren't that great compared to some of the other abilities in the game now the strengths of riser kuma are going to be the fact that riser kuma honestly has a really 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 good iframe ability now the first ability is kind of the ability of riser that almost everyone uses if they actually are using riser now i do want to keep in mind that the second ability of riser also is good Good, but generally the strength of riser is going to be the first ability like i i know it sounds weird to, to hear like oh the strength of this bloodline is that one single ability but for riser that is literally the case just because the mode the third ability in the in the, count, in the stun really aren't that great overall and the first ability are what people use of riser now the weakness is as i previously stated the first ability is going to be the only good ability of the bloodline so if you want to use a bloodline that's more averagely you know good you're probably better off using a different one now coming up with shindai akuma the strengths of shindai akuma are going to be that it is pretty much good for anything you would need so it has a really really good counter ability that when you hit them it does teleport you to them the clone summon they do a lot of damage it has a good place lock stun and has a good damage ability so shindai kuma is honestly just a really good overall bloodline the best ones are obviously going to be the first ability and the actual mode weapon spec so with the mode weapon spec it is a mode drain iframe ability and then obviously you do have the counter which is one of the single best counters in the game so shindai kuma's strengths rely on the fact that you know it's a, it's just honestly you know the counter of it is absolutely amazing amazing it's pretty much anything you would need from a single ability it does damage it stalls it stalls the fight out so you can charge a chi it's just honestly a really good ability and shindai kuma strengths are actually in the fact that all the abilities are actually usable and it does have two broken abilities now the weakness of shindai is that the stun and the damage ability really aren't the greatest or the easiest to hit so i do recommend that if you aren't going to be using the counter you probably don't want to be using shindai now last but not least of the akuma family is going to be sirachia akuma now sirachia akuma strengths rely on 
the fact that honestly like I'm, the only strength that sriracha has is that it has a good counter i mean when you look at sriracha's abilities overall they're really not that great the counter is the kind of the thing that carries it just because all the abilities are ju they're just very you know flawed the mode the fourth mode is also pretty good for sriracha but people generally only use the counter of sriracha now and don't get me wrong the counter is good now the weakness of sriracha is that the other abilities are borderline terrible and unusable so i do recommend that if you're going to be using sriracha only use the counter have you ever gotten 80 spin rarity and gotten something like just atomic well that's because you haven't hit the like button on this video yet if you hit the like button on this video you're guaranteed to get 10 million times luck 100 percent. all right so next up on the families is going to be the god bloodlines aka the gokus now we're of course gonna be starting off with sengoku uh sengoku overall i do think the strengths rely on the fact that it has pretty good iframe abilities i mean generally uh, people only use Sur sengoku for the for the counter i mean the, the counter is okay it, it definitely is a super flawed ability but it's okay overall but this is just me saying this but i do feel like sengoku overall it has a lot more weaknesses than strength so the weaknesses rely on the fact that um you know the, the stun is insanely hard to hit from sengoku on a person that's actually moving the actual first ability does have too much end lag for it and the counter honestly isn't really a great counter i do feel like the best part of sengoku is the third mode but even the third mode really isn't that great so the weaknesses of sengoku really definitely outshine the you know the the pros so i do recommend that you guys just stay away from sengoku as of now until they you know make a little bit of buffs to the other ability now the strengths of 10 goku are going to be in the fact that it has an absurd amount of damage output so goku has one of the highest raw damage outputs of abilities in the game it's just that you know as i'll as i'll say again on the weaknesses the, the strengths of this build line are going to be the damage output yes of course now the weakness is going to be the fact that even though it has a lot of damage output the abilities are really hard to hit so you can see i just did a million damage without even using my abilities but the abilities are hard to you know integrate into combos they're hard to you know you know use properly and i you know this is this is just uh you know my input on it but 10 goku would be an amazing z spec bloodline the abilities would be actually a you'd be able to integrate the abilities into actual combos and stuff like that it's just the abilities they're just pure damage ability and i do feel like pure damage abilities in general really aren't that great in this game unless they also have something else attached to them and Togoku just doesn't now coming up next is going to be red goku obviously the strength of red goku is going to be this super versatile and really really good mode so since the mode is insanely versatile i do feel like that is going to be the main strength of red goku the actual abilities really aren't the worst in the world they're actually usable it has a good combo extending pool it has a good first ability that block breaks third ability is terrible i'd recommend to stay away from it but the weakness of rengoku is that rengoku takes a lot of skill to use so the, i would say the rengoku mode is one of the most skill intensive modes of the game that's generally why you don't see people use it that much because even if you know they integrate into their combos generally they're only gonna be using like the third and first ability that's probably gonna be it from them <laughs> people generally only use like two abilities in rengoku mode while the best thing to do is actually just switch out and use every single mode ability i've tried to do it i've done my best to actually utilize, utilize this mode properly but in the end i'm better off using a more simple mode okay so coming up this is gonna be ren shiki the strengths of ren shiki are actually gonna be the fact that it has a really good mode and first ability now the mode and first ability obviously guys the first ability is the counter of ren shiki if you guys are unaware and the mode it, it's a very mode carry bloodline if i'm gonna be honest the second mode of ren shiki is really 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 good has a lot of damage output overall it's just a really good mode in general now the weakness of ren shiki is gonna be that the abilities do kind of fall flat on their face when compared to the strength of other moves in this game uh, i mean like all the abilities in general just kind of weaker versions of other moves that are you know generally in the game already and i do feel like overall red shiki is just one of those bloodlines that if you have a better bloodline you will never use it now for ryan run obviously the strengths of ryan run are going to be in the pure you know combo potential this bloodline actually has now the combo potential mostly comes from the first ability the first the third ability is actually a stun not in the sun global cooldown it's not a true stun but it does you know it does have a place lock stun attached to it and i do think that the uh the second ability is good you know in general if you double click it you can do up to like a hundred thousand damage but in general ryan ren is mostly used for the actual pool ability so the weakness of ryan ren is going to be that the mode really isn't that great even the second mode really isn't that great overall and ryan ren generally gets out out scaled and outshined by other bloodlines in the game now diva ren's diva ren's strengths are going to be in the pure combo potential this bloodline actually has so all the abilities of diva ren are actually pretty good for combo saying the first ability is true after m1 combos the third ability the knockback you can actually combo with and is instantaneous the second ability is kind of the weakest one of diva no never mind i lied the second ability is a almost an instantane it's i completely forgot that the second ability is no longer the meteor ability the second ability is one of the best i'm pretty sure it is the best pull ability in the game right now so diva diva ren just honestly has this absolutely absurd 
third combo potential and i do actually recommend that if you're going to be using diva red you do have to mix some combos into it you know get get ready to you know get your combo potential on my guy because diva red definitely it has one of the highest combo potential of any blood in this game now the weaknesses of diva red are going to rely on the fact that diva red overall i do think that it like some of the abilities do get outshined but i think overall the ability is the bloodline is one of the best in the game right now now up next is going to be forge red the strengths of forge red are honestly going to be that the mode is really 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 good i do think that the mode is probably one of the single best things of forge red if not the best thing of forge red but i do think that you know the weaknesses of forge red are going to be obviously that the abilities really are not that good all of the abilities have better versions of them within the game besides the second one the second one is very unique but it also is not even that good itself just because it has actually been majorly nerfed as an ability uh it's only autological cooldown now it's hard to hit on people in general and i do think that the third ability is just a remake of other bloodlines in the game so i do think forge red strengths definitely do not outshine its weaknesses and it definitely is a very weak bloodline now no up next is going to be actually shindai ren shindai ren overall i do think shindai ren is it's one of those bloodlines where the strengths definitely do outshine the weaknesses of it so the strengths are going to be that it has a you know high damage counter if you can actually land it if you can't land the counter then overall you're, you're going to be kind of bummed you know you're going to be kind of screwed over but the counter does do a lot of damage i don't think the counter is that great overall so i do think shindai ren the strengths kind of rely on the fact that it has kind of anything you would need from a kit it has a really good mode it has good combo extenders it has a you know it has a really good counter really good damage ability so i do think people would generally view shindai ren as being a really good bloodline just because you could use shindai ren and probably only use like an ekg and be just fine within the game but i also think at the same time the weaknesses of shindai ren are that the abilities honestly at this point in the game the abilities of shindai ren definitely do get outshined by other abilities within the game so such as the counter the counter requires hand signs it takes a lot of chi the black break you know it's kind of hard to combo with if you know what, unless you know what you're doing the damage ability also isn't one of the highest damage abilities in the game it's quite low all things considered and i do think the mode itself really isn't that good at all when you when, when you think of the abilities i think the only good ability of the mode now is going to be the throwable and the actual m1s otherwise you know shit i read is just one of those weird bloodlines that it just kind of just worked now with satori ren obviously the strength of satori ren is going to be the fact that it is an ekg now i do think that strength is very outshined by its weaknesses which is going to be honestly that if the abilities are generally not that good so i do think that is a very valid weakness for satori just because i do think the first move damage was nerfed the the uh actual auto dodge really isn't that great at all and the third ability is by far one of the worst abilities in the game now when you look at the mode you look at the mode and you're kind of you may think to yourself oh you know that's not that bad it really is <laughs> the mode is a z spec mode all the abilities are super predictable and they really don't do that much damage now for doku to goku the strength is going to be in the fact that doku tengoku overall is just honestly it's just one of those bloodlines that have two good abilities that kind of carries it so it has a really good block breaking ability which does strong it does break stronger block it also is combo extendable and it has one of the best counters of the game now which i do think the counter deserves you know what it has also the mode was buffed so now you can actually properly combo extend with the mode and stuff like that but the weakness of doku to goku is going to be honestly in the fact that the the everything is kind of outshined by other abilities besides the actual counter i do think while the the really good block break is really good in this game there are block breaks that are further ranged and stuff like that which are actually better and the mode isn't the best in the game either now for kagoku right here the strength of kagoku is going to be in the fact that the mode is actually quite good now the weaknesses of kagoku are going to be in the fact that kagoku in general really just isn't that great of a bloodline when you look at the actual abilities i mean the first ability has too much end lag to use properly the second ability is one of the worst pulls in the entire game because if you miss the pull ability you it, it doesn't work so it's one of the only pull abilities that can actively hurt you just by missing it and the third ability is just pretty much a combo breaker that's actually on the element slots i mean on the bloodline slots i do think that making this a z spec could make the bloodline more usable overall but you do also have to fix the inherent issues of the bloodline which i just listed out now for ryan gaiden the strengths of ryan gaiden are going to be in the honestly in the fact that ryan gaiden i do think the mode of ryan gaiden is very 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 good i mean it has a really good counter ability Ability. it has a really good you know weapon spec that where you could click with someone it does a lot of damage the throwable also is pretty good from ryan gaiden but the weakness of ryan gaiden is gonna be that the abilities are just super counterable the first move is an i is an iframe attack where the iframe where the end lag of the ability lasts longer than the actual iframe the second ability is now a hand sign ability that you know honestly isn't that great ever since they added hand signs to it and the third ability is also it is easily counterable if you know how to counter if you don't know how to counter it you will get stomped by this ability but this ability in general it's just a really easy to counter ability 
so starting off with the clan bloodlines we're of course going to be starting off with a vengeance now vengeance right here i do actually think vengeance the strengths of vengeance are going to be in the fact that it actually is just a really easy to use bloodline it's, it has decent combos you know i do feel like that's just kind of its strengths the strengths are going to be that it is just kind of meant for you know people that really aren't that good at, at the game and stuff like that and i think that's fine there definitely needs to be one of those bloodlines within the game and vengeance just happens to be that bloodline now whether you know people want to admit it or not is up to them but in the end of things i do think the strength of vengeance is that it is very easy to use now the weakness of vengeance is going to be that if you're actually you know better at the game there's generally you know ways to counter vengeance and stuff like that and there's also just better versions of vengeance's actual moves so it's honestly up to you whether or not you want to be using vengeance now coming up next is going to be ragnar now the strengths of ragnar are going to be the fact that it has a really you know good block breaking move it's an instant un you know cancelable block break move and the fact that the actual second move does a lot of damage now if you minus these from actually ragnar it ends up being a pretty basic bloodline it has you know a below average you know counter so i do think the weakness of ragnar is going to be that only two of the abilities are generally really good and the other abilities are just you know worse versions of other abilities within the game now next is going to be van helsing now the strength of van helsing is going to be in the fact that it has a absolute ton of iframe now i do think that the absolute ton of iframes definitely does play an impact on how good a bloodline actually is and for Van Helsing, it is literally all that this bloodline is. This bloodline is pure iframes. Now, the weakness of Van Helsing is going to be that every single one of Van Helsing's abilities is on a type of global cooldown. Now, that is actually a huge weakness because it's very hard to mix other bloodlines with Van Helsing. And it actually is a shame because I actually really like Van Helsing. Now, coming up next is going to be Strange. Now, of course, the, you know, the uh, strengths of Strange has an absolutely amazing mode. Literally the best mode in the entire game. But the weakness of Strange is going to be that all of the abilities that are, you know, you could replace them with other abilities that just make more sense. But but in general, Strange is still a really good bloodline. It's also really easy to use, has an insanely busted mode. So don't even mind the weakness because the weakness is just generally the only thing that's bad about it. Now coming next is going to be Shiro Glacier. Now the strength of Shiro Glacier is going to be that it doesn't have any global cooldowns whatsoever. Another strength of it is that actually the weapon spec of, you know, Shiro Glacier is by far one of the single best weapon specs in the entire game. I'll also say that the third ability is also quite good, but the weakness of Shiro Glacier is that the it's pretty weak other than the things that I listed. So you're generally only going to be using a, you know, a, the the exact same one or two moves from Shiro Glacier all the time. Now coming next would be Rune Kanchu. Now Rune Kanchu, the strengths of Rune Kanchu definitely rely in the mode. The mode of Rune Kanchu is amazing. No, nobody is you know questioning that. The, the mode of Rune Kanchu is amazing, but the actual moves are not that great. The first ability is insanely hard to actually use properly. At most, it barely does any damage to someone unless you're moted. The second move has a gap in it, so they can instantly use a counter before you can actually use anything, and the counter doesn't even work half the time. But the mode of Rune Kanchu is literally literally amazing it's by far one of the best modes of the game you can pretty much like melt someone's hp almost instantly before they even get the chance to perfect block so the mode is amazing but the actual abilities are bad now last but not least in the first set of the clan bloodlines is going to be eastwood karashi now eastwood karashi definitely the strengths are going to be in the fact that the first and third ability are insanely good for combos they either are just really easy to extend combos with or they're iframe so i do think while you know these abilities are good the weakness is definitely that the mode is very lackluster and the second ability is pretty bad now the next four family of bloodlines we're going to be doing is of course going to be the makis now the makis we're going to start off with the you know the most basic maki in the game naramaki now naramaki we're here the strengths are going to rely on the fact that the actual tenth is Sion mode oh i all oh, right i don't actually have this one equipped let's switch over to the superior naramaki i mean like come on like this is this is so much look better looking than the original naramaki but okay the the tenth is Sion mode and yes i'm saying it wrong on purpose just to make you guys mad this mode is absurdly strong it like i'm gonna be honest when i say this i genuinely think i'm gonna start using this mode in like pvp because not only does it it has really really good combo potential in general it has insanely high stats it has m1s that actually chi drain from people so bink 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 actually does chi drain so i do think narmaki this the second mode does kind of carry the bloodline now the weaknesses in this bloodline are gonna be while the mode is absolutely super good it's a really really good mode generally the actual booties in narmaki are not that good i mean like the booties either have too much you know startup to actually Actually be worth using they either you know just don't really have a purpose within the game or generally or honestly they just really aren't that good of abilities so i do think that the mode does carry the bloodline and the weakness is going to be that the moves are terrible now up next is going to be boromaki now the strengths of boromaki are going to be in the fact that boromaki has an insanely good second ability and mode now the actual mode it honestly just has a lot of damage output it has a really good block breaking ability which is the weapon spec honestly boromaki mode is one of the best modes of the game now the second ability of boromaki also is a really good ability you could choose 
choose when to use it which makes it insanely powerful i have seen people using it quite a bit and it actually is a it's a really good ability to use i mean generally the second ability if you're not actually using a true auto dodge ability you can use the second ability the second ability is worth using now the weakness is going to be the fact that the other abilities are really not that great overall so you're kind of just forced to only use the the second mode which also is a little bit hard to get because you do have to grind a boss i think just generally boromaki you know there's just better ball nines now now up next is going to be kamaki the strengths of kamaki are going to be honestly nothing uh, i'm sorry to the people that actually like kamaki and kamaki just has no strengths i'm just gonna be honest with you the weakness of kamaki is gonna be in the fact that all the abilities are generally just not as good as you know other counterparts which are the exact same and kamaki is just super wonky as the bloodline to use you know it used to actually be somewhat usable before they nerfed the cooldowns of it but now that the cooldowns are there this bloodline is quite literally almost impossible to use properly no up next is going to be my bloodline of course it's going to be jeremaki now jeremaki over here boom it's going to be the azure skin one of the worst skins of the game oh yeah look at that shade of blue oh yeah i love dirt when it comes to actually jeremaki jeremaki in general it really you know the strengths of the bloodline are going to be in the fact that i do i believe this and i will keep believing this jeremaki has a good mode if they were just to if they were just to fix the m1s of the mode the mode would by far be an extremely good mode to use i do think the c spec doesn't work sometimes but it would actually be a good mode and i would use it quite a bit now the weakness of jeremaki is that the stun isn't as good as other stuns in the game the ha actual hair grab ability glitches their character out sometimes it also isn't a true combo extender because that's too much end lag to combo with and the third ability is also widely regarded as being one of the worst abilities in the entire game so yeah sad gay remote now up next is going to be one of the you know widely regarded as being one of the best play lines of the game six path naramaki now the strength of six path naramaki is going to be that has a really 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 good you know iframe ability which is actually the third one even though it is on the global cooldown i still use the ability now i do actually really like using it in general but i do think the weakness of, of six path naramaki is going to be in the fact that some of the abilities really aren't that great uh while they are usable like the second ability you know it has an absolutely fat aoe i do actually think that you know the generally the first and second ability of naramaki six pass really aren't that great but the mode and the third ability are absolutely amazing all right so the next family bloodlines we're going to be doing is actually going to be the kanichis now the kanichis overall they're kind of the group of bloodlines that it's that people a lot of a lot of people generally just don't really like in this game but the strengths of the original kanichi bloodline are going to be that the mode is really really good it has a good combo center has a passive auto dodge for form of the mode and generally it's a really good taijutsu based mode now the weakness of kanichi is that all of the moves generally are not that great at all they all either have gaps or either super predictable or just straight up bad now next is going to be ryuji kanichi now the strengths of ryuji kanichi are going to be that the mode does actually have a second life so the mode itself really isn't that bad but ever since the nerfs it really isn't that good anymore and you know i was one of those people i'm glad it got nerfed i'm glad it got what it got but in general i do actually think that ryuji kanichi is still is a usable bloodline in general but i do think that ryuji kanichi does have some weaknesses obviously the weaknesses are going to start off with the mode actually was nerfed so it isn't as good as it was before the actual moves are very hard to hit in actual combat besides i would say the third move like because like the first and second move they either have tiny a aoe hitboxes or they're just you know hard to use but the third ability is probably one of the better abilities of ryuji but there are better versions of the ability now so just keep that in mind you're actually using you know kenichi and ryuji now up next is going to be bruce kenichi now the strengths of bruce kenichi are going to rely on the fact that it is an ekg that is good at combo extending so ryuji ryuji kenichi does i'm mean, not ryuji bruce kenichi does have really really good combo extending potential it has an okay you know mode in general but the weaknesses of Bruce are going to be that, you know, the only really good, the only really, really, really good ability, in my opinion, is going to actually be the third one. Now, while the first and second one, they're not unusable abilities, there is definitely better in this game. And the second move can only be used in air combos unless you're actually in Bruce mode. So I do actually think that the weaknesses of this bloodline are quite apparent. They may not seem that bad, but they're really bad considering that Bruce is a combo extending bloodline. Now, the next family of bloodlines we're going to be talking about is going to be the Jokai family. Now, Jokai's overall, they, they all kind of share the same similarities between between strengths and weaknesses the strength of jokai and air hockey jokai they're practically the same exact bloodline is going to be that they are you know quite good at combos in general now i do think that they they definitely have a lot of weaknesses a lot of the abilities are generally not that great but the strength are going to be that air hockey jokai and jokai do a lot of damage and they're good for combos now the weakness of them is that the you know the combo potential of the actual bloodlines is going to be worse than the combo potential of other bloodlines so they're just generally not that good i do think air hockey jokai is usable but normal jokai is not now of course the last one in the jokai family is going to be light jokai right here light jokai has a really good mode in second ability which is going to be the strength the strength is going to be that it has a really good it has a really 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 good mode 
mode, a really good counter, and that you could honestly get away with only using the second move and mode of Jokai. I mean, light Jokai. That's how good the actual abilities are. They're worth taking up a bloodline slot, even, you know, that though that's the thing. Now, the weaknesses are going to be that it has a very bad block breaking and a very bad third ability, but if you can get past that, then light Jokai might actually be a good bloodline for you. All right, so the next family of bloodlines we're going to be doing is, of course, going to be the Senko. Now, the original Senko's bloodline strength honestly relies on the fact that the first ability is an instantaneous block breaking combo starter. The actual other booties of Senko really are not that great. They are usable, don't get me wrong. The other booties of Senko are very usable, but I do feel like the weakness of Senko is going to be that it only has one really, really good ability, which is obviously going to be the first one. Now, coming up next is going to be a Zim Senko. Now, a Zim Senko is actually going to be a little bit different, of course. Um, the difference between a Senko and a Zim Senko is actually quite drastic. Now, a Zim Senko's, you know, the strength of a Zim Senko is going to be that it has a really, really good counter. Now, after they actually buffed a Zim Senko, the third move is now actually useful, and so is the mode. So, a Zim Senko overall is actually a lot better than it used to be, but the slam, the weakness is definitely going to be that the only really, 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 really good ability is going to be the first one. So, the other abilities, while they are not, you know, the worst in the world, the only extremely good ability is going to be the first one. Now, coming up next is going to be Dio Senko. Now, the strength of Dio Senko is going to be that the mode of Dio Senko is absolutely amazing. The first mode is really good for combo starting. You also have the second mode, which is also pretty good as well. The weapon spec is going to be a bunch of, you know, shuriken time stops. It does a lot of damage. It's a pretty good ability overall. Now, the weakness of Dio Senko is going to be th th that the actual moves are really not that great. So, I'm talking about, like, the time stop, the dash ability, the first ability of Dio Senko. They're not that good. The mode definitely does carry Dio Senko quite a bit. Now, coming up next is going to be Pika Senko. Now, Pika Senko, of course, is going to be an okay bloodline overall. I do think the strength of Pika Senko definitely relies on the, you know, the combo potential this bloodline actually has. A lot of the abilities can actually be used for combo extending in general, and the actual mode is also really good of Pika Senko as well. Now, the weakness of Pika Senko is going to be that it takes a ton of chi to use this bloodline. A lot of the abilities take a, you know, quite a bit of chi to use properly, or they just, you know, they're not worth their chi cost in general. I do also think that the cooldowns of Pika Senko are also quite long. Now, last but not least in the Senko family is going to be Minakazi. Now, the strengths of Minakazi are going to be in the fact that the third ability is one of the, you know, it's a, it's a really good combo extending ability. I do think the third ability, as long as you know how to use it, can be one of the better combo extending abilities in your kit. But the weakness is going to be that the other abilities of Minakazi are borderline unusable. They're terrible. Even after the buff, they're really not that great. So I do recommend staying away from those abilities, but the third ability of Minakazi is very nice. All right, so four Shizen and Raikou Shizen, the strength of this bloodline is going to be the fact that the second mode actually does a lot of damage to someone. Now, you got to be aware when using this that generally that it, it will be quite difficult to hit them with the actual mode spec, but if you can get the mode spec off of them, you could do like 200,000 damage. Now, it's also, you know, you also need to be aware of the fact that generally you you <laughs> you won't be able to hit this move a lot of the time in PvP, so I do think the weakness is that it's very inconsistent as a bloodline. Now, the strength of Giovanni Shizen is honestly going to be nothing. Now, I do think that the one strength that it might have is that it can actually be used for zoning, but ever since they nerfed, so the weakness is going to be that ever since they nerfed the second mode of it, it doesn't really have an identity as a bloodline. It does nothing good. Everything it does is overshadowed by another bloodline within the game. Now, after all, much is in the strengths of Alfie Armish is going to be the fact that it actually is a very versatile bloodline with a lot of different types of abilities. Third one is a good zoning ability that allows you to get a lot of, you know, you know, just stalling of fights out. So I do think that overall it does, the kit overall is actually an extremely good kit, but you have to be aware of the weakness of Alfie Armish is in, which is the weakness of Alfie Armish is, in, is mostly going to be the fact that the mode takes so, the, the mode takes so much mode from you. The mode, it takes over a hundred a second from you, which is pr really ridiculous when considering, you know, how much mode sake of this game. So I do think that is the main weakness of Alfirama. Now, coming up next is going to be the Dokai family. The Dokais in general are really just kind of, you know, known for either being good against PvE or they're good for just silencing people. Now, the original Dokai, the strengths of it are going to be that it has the very unique ability to silence people, so they cannot use abilities when they're actually, you know, getting targeted by the silence abilities of Dokai. Now, the weakness of Dokai is going to be generally, it's really not that great of a bloodline other than, you know, it has a few gimmicks to it, which actually are the reason why a lot of people do like Dokai, but other than those gimmicks, it's really not that great. Now up next is going to be Bankai Inferno. Bankai Inferno in general is really just, it's a, it's just not really that good of a bloodline anymore. The strengths are going to be that the first ability is actually a breakaway ability, but it actually was nerfed recently, so the cooldown's insanely longer. You can't use it mid-combo and stuff like that anymore, so I do think that since it was, the first ability was nerfed, it's really not that great of a bloodline, just because the weaknesses of Bankai Inferno are going to be that it's just, it's really not that great. None of the abilities are generally, you know, stuff that you would use over other bloodlines, and I do think Bankai Inferno is really not that great. Now, the last but not least, Dokai is, of course, could be Xeno Dokai. Obviously, the strengths are that it has an insanely good mode for PvE, and the weakness is going to be that it's not really that good for PvP content. All right, so next up is going to be the EKGs, at least the first of them. So, of course, the first one's going to be 
be Inferno. Now, Inferno, I would say that the strengths of Inferno are going to be the fact that it is a just a really, 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 really amazing utility-based bloodline. It's just fully, it's pretty much fully utility-based besides the first move. Um, so the, the second move is an iframe ability, not the iframe global cooldown. It's a really good ability overall as well. The third ability actually does a lot more damage than you would think. Like the third move does do quite a bit of damage, especially if you just throw it into combos. It can also cancel people's hand sides and stuff like that. I do think the first ability is kind of the weakness of Inferno. I do think that the fact it goes into an air combo is not that good, but it definitely is one of the better. It, it's the best EKG in the game. Now, coming up next is going to be the EKGs. It's going to be Scorch. Now, obviously, the, the strengths of Scorch is going to be the absolutely massive damage output this bloodline has, combined with the fact that it is insanely easy to integrate into combos. Now, the weakness is going to be that it's kind of hard to use as a standalone bloodline. Now, up next is going to be Frostfire. Now, the strength of Frostfire is going to be that it is for the exact same reason as Scorch. It is really good for just combos and damage and stuff, but the weakness is going to be that Scorch is literally just Frostfire, but better. Now, up next is going to be Web. Now, the strength of Web is going to be that the second move does actually move stack, and the third ability is a really good iframe ability. Now, the weakness of Web is going to be that it just generally really isn't that great when compared to the other bloodlines within the game, but by but it's fine. It's also really bad by itself, as all EKGs are. Now, next up in the EKGs is going to be Blood. Now, Blood is actually one of those bloodlines that is insanely good for combos. So, the strength of Blood is going to be that it is by far one of these, you know, best, if not the best combo EKG within the entire game. Now, the weakness of, of Blood is going to be the fact that you are required to use another bloodline with it. You cannot use this bloodline as a standalone, so it is very dependent on having another really good bloodline. All right, starting off with Clan 2 is going to be Jin Shiki. Now, the strength of Jin Shiki is just going to be that it has a really good counter, but the weaknesses of Jin Shiki is that the counter is the only good ability, and it does get canceled sometimes. Now, next is going to be Cobra. Now, the strength of Cobra is going to be that Cobra just has a really, really good mode, but the weakness of Cobra is going to be the fact that it has, you know, it, the actual abilities the Cobra are really not that great. Now, up next is going to be Ghost Karashi. The strengths of Ghost Karashi are going to be the, it's honestly going to be nothing. And the weakness of Ghost Karashi is going to be that the moves are very, you know, extremely range locked. And the actual mode itself is really not that great either. Now, the strengths of Odin Sabri are going to be the, actually that the second ability is a really good combo extending ability. I would also say that the first ability is okay for iframing. You know, it's an okay iframe ability. I would also like to say that the weapon spec of Odin Sabri, it is extremely, you know, close range, but you can use it to bypass block. The weakness of Odin Sabri is going to be that the other abilities are just honestly really terrible. Now, next up is going to be hair. Now, hair is actually going to be, you know, the strengths of hair are going to be that it actually is an okay combo bloodline. Now, the weakness of it is going to be that the moves just generally really aren't that great, and you're better off trying to combo with a different one. Now, up next is going to be mecha spirit. Now, the strengths of mecha spirit are going to rely in actually the first ability being quite good, and the second ability is actually an okay combo extender, but the weakness of mecha spirit could be that the mode is actually bad. They actually did, you know, rework the mode of the second mode, so it doesn't take chi anymore. Obviously, a lot better than what it was. I actually do think it still takes chi, but it's not as much now. Yeah, it takes barely any chi, so it actually is better than it used to be, so that's actually a really good thing, but the mode is still pretty bad overall. Now, Seishin is going to be up next. Now, the strengths of Seishin is going to be that it actually is an okay combo bloodline, but the weakness is going to be that the, the moves are actually extremely, you know, scenario limited. Now, the strengths of Dangan are going to be the fact that Dangan third and the third and first ability are actually really, really, really good abilities. I mean, like, because the third, the third and first, you could all, they're basically almost instant, and they are really long-range overall pretty good abilities. Now, I will say that the weakness of Dangan is going to be the fact that the mode really is kind of trash and the counter um it's just like it's an okay counter but it's not the bad now the strength of Sabru is obviously going to be the fact that the mode is actually pretty decent if you guys look at the mode the mode actually can be used for combo extending and actually does bypass block also the first ability is an instantaneous combo extender but the weakness is going to be that Sabru overall really is just not that good now obviously for Kanju the strength is going to be the fact that it actually does drain a ton of chi from people but I will say that the weakness of Kanju does rely on the fact that if they know how to fight against Kanchu, you're literally not going to do anything whatsoever. Now, for Eternal, the strengths actually do rely on the fact that it actually is a really, really, really good combo bloodline. It also has an okay counter. I wouldn't say it's the best in the world, but it's definitely not bad. But definitely, the combo potential of Eternal is amazing. It's by far one of the best combo bloodlines in the game. It's extremely underrated, but they just need to fix the third ability. It has too much end lag. Otherwise, this bloodline, I would say it that it would be fine. Now, for Glacier, the the, uh, the strengths of Glacier is going to be the fact that it actually has an extremely good ability ability that can bypass a lot of different things within the game. So I'm talking about the second ability, which actually is the mirror ability. So when you use the mirror ability in someone, you can actually, you know, combo extend with it and stuff like that. It also can bypass perfect block, I'm pretty sure. But the actual other abilities of Glacier are pretty terrible. Now the strength of Nectar is actually going to be the raw damage output this bloodline actually has. If you use all of the abilities of Nectar and you actually use them all together, especially if you actually know how to combo extend with the abilities, they will do an absolute massive amount of damage. Nectar right now is one of the highest damage bloodlines in the game. And it 
it isn't it isn't for no reason now up next is gonna be wanzi i mean obviously the strength of wanzi i mean is gonna be the really good mode it actually has the mode it does make you invisible it makes you able to go around make sure m1s actually drain a ton of chi from them but the weakness of wanzi is gonna be that the actual abilities are really not that good now the strengths of shadow are going to be the fact that, that the actual c spec is really good against bosses but i do think the weakness of shadow does rely on the fact that the second move isn't true after m1 combos which makes it pretty bad and neither is the third move so you do have to do use a bit of finesse to use this in pvp now next is to be azurashi the strength of azurashi actually does rely in um the fact that it is really good if you know how to use it properly like it does it's a really good m1 combo extending bloodline the first move is an instant block breaker the second move is a cheese seal but the weakness the, i mean the third move is a cheese seal the weakness of azarashi is that it's really not that great as a standalone bloodline and even as a supporting bloodline this is like your fourth bloodline slot bloodline now up next is gonna be ashes storm now the strength of ashes storm does rely on the fact that ashes storm is actually it actually has an insanely high damage output now especially when you, you actually know how to use all the abilities but the weakness of ashes storm is gonna be that it is extremely range locked as the actual bloodline and i do think that ashes storm still really isn't that great but it definitely is better than it used to be that's for sure now up next is gonna be vine now vine obviously really isn't that great of a bloodline i do think the strengths rely on the fact that it is very good for trolling and just hiding in general but the weakness is going to be that the moves are generally not that good themselves now for kaijin i do think kaijin overall really isn't that great of a bloodline but it is extremely good for pve content so i do think that, that the strength of this is going to be that it is good for pve but the weakness is going to be that i actually have had someone use the second ability against me the second ability is a really good pvp ability like seriously but the other abilities of uh, Ashes Storm, I mean not Ashes Storm, of Kaijin are really not that great overall, and I do think that it is kind of PvE locked. Now, next would be Kakatsu. Now, Kakatsu right here is, I do think the strengths of it are going to be that it is a really, 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 really good M1 combo extending bloodline. But the weakness is going to be that, you know, that is kind of only what it's good for. The other abilities are really not that great, so it's kind of just for M1 combo extending. Now, next would be Bubble. The strengths of Bubble are going to be that the fact that it is an extremely, you know, big AoE bloodline. But the weakness is going to be that Bubble doesn't really fit into the meta right now, and it just isn't that good overall. Overall. Now next is to be Storm. Now the strength of Storm is going to be the fact that the third ability is now actually a sort of auto dodge. But I do think that the weakness of Storm is going to be that it really doesn't do anything better than another bloodline does. But the second move is an okay, you know, auto dodge counter ability. Now next is going to be Ink. Now Ink overall, I do think Ink is an okay bloodline. If I'm going to be dead honest, but I do think that the strength of Ink definitely relies in the fact that actually it's really good for combos in general. But I do think that the weakness of Ink is going to be that the fact that the the actual auto tracking of the abilities are generally not that great now the strengths of apollo sand are gonna be that the third ability is actually really 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 good against bosses and stuff like that and so is the c-spec but the the but the you know the, the weakness of actual apollo sand is that it's not that good for pvp content now for okami okami the strengths of okami are going to be the fact that it actually does it has the potential to do a lot of damage but the weakness is going to be that first of all it glitches out sometimes and second of all it really just isn't that good other for things other than traveling but you know i guess another strength is the fact that it actually is really really good for traveling now for minikami i do think the strengths of Minikami, Minikami do rely on the mode actually being pretty decent in general, but the weakness of Minikami is going to be that the abilities are really not that great. Now, last but not least for the clan bloodlines is going to be Sand. Now, the strengths of Sand is going to be that it does actually have one of the best counters in the actual game, but the weakness is going to be that oh 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 okay sand's bugged that's good to know i guess but yeah yeah sand overall really the counter is good when it doesn't bug i guess by the way guys what is your favorite bloodline of shooter life if you're talking about below we'll be checking them out now we're going to be doing ekgs too now the actual strengths of smoke now the strengths of smoke are going to be in the fact that smoke is actually has a really really good traveling ability which is actually the first one now the weakness of smoke is that the other it's just not good for pvp content literally whatsoever not much going to be mensa now the strength of mensa is that mensa actually does have quite quite a bit of you know versatility as a bloodline but the weakness is going to be that the moves are generally are really just not that good they're super wonky and at best you're just kind of looking at like a you know very very unique circumstance bloodline now the strength of tsunami is that it actually is a really really good pve bloodline but the weakness is going to be that for pvp content the knockback is just too much now the strengths of variety mud is going to be the fact that it actually does have a good stalling ability which is the clone and the actual dragon slam ability is also pretty usable i mean like it has no end lag now so you can't actually combo with and stuff but the weakness is going to be that there's just much much better abilities for everything i just listed now the strengths of typhoon are going to be the fact that typhoon actually it, it's an okay bloodline overall it has a lot of you know versatility as a bloodline the second move still does tons of damage it doesn't do as much but it still does tons now the weakness of typhoon is going to be the fact that i do actually think that the nerf kind of impacted it a little bit too much it doesn't do as much damage as it should now the strengths of emerald are going to be the fact that the second booty is good against bosses but the weakness of emerald is going to be that the abilities they're very hard to practically use in an actual pvp fight 
fight. Now the strength of sound is going to be the absolute massive damage output that sound actually has, but the weakness is going to be that they actually nerfed the, the damage of the second ability, so it doesn't do nearly as much damage as it used to, but it still is an okay ability. Now the strength of bore are going to be the fact that actually, you know, you can, you know, easily throw it into combos, but the weakness is going to be that bolt overall is a very circumstantial bloodline, and generally you want to use a different bloodline over it. Now the next is going to be paper. Now the strength of paper is going to be the, for the same reason as actual sound. It does have an absolute, you know, super massive damage output, especially when you throw in the second ability into it. Now the weakness of paper is that some of the abilities are very finicky, it's hard to integrate into your combos and stuff like that, and I do actually think that you're better off using a different bloodline overall. Now the strength of clay is going to be that it actually is really good for just, you know, poking people. Now if you're unaware of what poking someone is, it's just like very small damage amounts at a time. It's just really good for that because it's easy for just doing that and getting away. Now the weakness of clay is that other than just poking someone, it really isn't that great of a bloodline. Now for Black Shock, the strength of Black Shock is that it actually has a really good M1 combo extending mode. But I do actually think that the weakness, they actually are very weird with the actual abilities. The abilities were good and then they were bad and then they were good and then they were bad. So I don't think they really know what they want to do with the abilities. But I do think that the mode of Black Shock is a really, really good mode, especially if you have good aim. Now the strength of nature is that it's easy to get and it has an okay stun, but I do think the weakness of nature is that it just really, you know, while it is somewhat easy to integrate into combos, you're just better off using something else, honestly. Now, the Strength of Mud is actually does have a pretty high damage ability, which is the third one, but the weakness is going to be that the second move is only auto dodge the global cooldown, and the first move is a very, you know, hard to hit stun. Now, it's going to be Lava. Now, the Strength of Lava is going to be that it actually does have quite a high damage output, especially when you integrate the third ability into it, but the weakness is going to be that the abilities are sometimes hard to hit in actual fights. Now, the Strength of Ice is that the third move is actually good against bosses because they'll travel through the third move it does a lot of damage to them but the weakness is going to be that some of the abilities are just very glitchy and that's why they're good like the first move is only good because it's actually super glitchy now the strength of gold sand is that it actually isn't the worst bloodline in the game the abilities are actually usable somewhat but i do think that the weakness is that the, all the moves are just generally worse versions of other moves within already within the game now the strength of explosion obviously guys it has a really good combo extending move the second move it's an instantaneous ragdoll 45,000 da damage ability but the weakness of explosion is going to be that the other abilities are generally not that good so you're only going to be using one ability from the bloodline now the strength of atomic is that actually the second move is a low cooldown big damage ability and the third move is actually a pretty good stun ability but the weakness is going to be that atomic it's just generally you know you're better off using a different damage ability now obviously the strength of crystal is that the second move is really good for throwing into your combos because it makes you do pretty much it makes you do pretty much a free like 60,000 damage but the weakness is going to be that the first move is super glitchy and the third move is generally really not that great besides against bosses look at that he walked around inside of it in like one shot him. Now the strength of steam is going to be the fact that it actually does have you know a decent combo potential and I do actually think that it is somewhat good for traveling but the weakness of steam is going to be that you know why would you use steam when you can use any other bloodline in the game this is the worst bloodline in the game boys. Anyways guys that's pretty for this video if you guys enjoyed this video remember to like subscribe post for guys bye bye.